Hey guys, welcome to AI with AI. This side Asif Ibnat. In today's video, we are going to talk about Random Forest, a very famous popular dataset we are going to use is Iris dataset. We have used Iris dataset on multiple machine learning algorithms. We have used Iris dataset on logistic regression, on naive bees, on uh, decision tree and now we are using Iris dataset on Random Forest. So, if you have not watched those videos, I suggest you to watch the previous examples using different machine learning algorithms and here we are going to understand what is the accuracy that we can get and how do we really apply iris data set on random forest so let's get started Okay, so before I directly jump to example, quick overview on random forest. Random forest is an advanced version of decision tree where a big data or a huge data is split into smaller data sets and every part of the subset will have individual decision tree. And finally, takes the average from all the decision trees to predict the accuracy of the data set. Just to conclude, rather than having a one decision tree on a huge data, we will have a split of a data and having multiple decision decision trees on individual data set and finally something like this so you can see you have tree 1 tree 2 so we have six trees here created from the same data set and we'll take a decision from individual trees so this tree says yes this tree says no we see most of the trees are saying yes and only one tree is saying no so here we take majority vote we i mean random forest takes the majority vote and predicts the final output so the output would be finally it will be yes in simple words huge data divided into the smaller data sets every data set will have a individual tree individual tree will calculate the result and finally taking the vote from all the trees and based on that predicting the output this is what random forest does we have already discussed random forest in detail in the previous videos please find it out i'll also keep the link in the description and in the i button above all right let's jump on the demo part now so we have a jupiter notebook open here and you can see in the image there are multiple trees created on each data subset so we are going to see this on iris data set a random forest applied using iris data set so let me give you a short introduction about iris data set so iris data set is a typical machine learning classification problem it's a very famous very popular data set we have in machine learning as i have already said there are three types of iris flowers one is setosa second is versicolor and virginica so we are going to train our machine learning model on the given data set and whenever a new flower is presented to a machine learning model we need to predict what type this flower belongs to whether it is setosa whether it is versicolor or virginica okay so how does our data looks like so if you look at the data definitely this is not deep learning so we don't have images so we have a data in the form of tables so you can see the top part of this flower is called petal this part is called petal and the bottom part of e is called sepal so we have data given something like this in the table sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width basically length and width of the petals is given and same way length and the width of the sepal is given so based on the dimensions based on the calculation calculations it is possible for us to classify what class or what type of this flower belongs to whether it is setosa versicolor or virginica right so this is what we need to predict definitely it is supervised classification machine learning problem where right answers are given you need to find more right ones great let's proceed ahead so in the first cell let's just ignore the warnings if we have any and as usual thumb of a rule import all the libraries that will be required so these are some of the python data science libraries libraries like numpy pandas matplotlib and cborn as usual right in every example you might have seen we always import these libraries okay no need to talk about these in detail numpy for numerical operations pandas for performing operations on the tables matplotlib is a plotting library to plot the graphs and cborn is the advanced version of the graphs so some scatter plots and uh, histograms and so on and so forth we have also imported data sets from scikit-learn sklearn is a scikit-learn library we are using here we are using inbuilt data set iris data set here sklearn import metrics so this is for calculating metrics such as precision recall and f1 score and draw all the plots in line let me execute this shift enter okay we imported all the libraries required what we are doing here is simply we are loading the iris data set 
data set if you see we imported here basically the inbuilt data set and creating a data frame df to visualize the data of pd is the pandas from pandas create a data frame so that i can visualize the data i just want to see how my data looks like so df dot head to print first five rows so let me execute this shift enter so i can see sepal length sepal width petal length petal width and the target so this is what i have mentioned here so that i can see the data how it looks like you can see df dot head shows first five rows and i can see the length and width are provided in the centimeters and definitely the target column y column is not the categorical value it is numericals because machine learning models understands only numbers so 0 0 0 is basically type 1 i think it should be setosa in short type 0 is setosa type 1 is versicolor and type 2 is virginica okay so this is 0 this is 1 this is 2 and let me see the value count df dot target so I, I want to see how many different types of targets do we have shift enter so i can see 0 50 2 50 150 that means we have total 150 rows 150 data sets and all are of type integer 0 1 2 i can see great and i'm using sns sns is a seaborn and seaborn is to plot some advanced graphs here we are plotting scatter plot you see this plt dot scatter plot let me show you the output so you can see this is how the plot we are are doing to visualize the data so thumb of a rule again import the data understand the data whenever you get the data plot the data if possible so whenever you plot the data it becomes easier for you to visualize and it is it becomes easier for you to understand the data and once you understand the data it becomes easier for you to train the model on the data or basically you can understand which machine learning model can fit best on the data so this is always recommended that if possible plot the data so that you can decide which machine learning model can be used for this type of data so here i can see we have plotted the data against petal width and petal length we can imagine visualize only two dimensional data right uh, though we have four rows here but i cannot draw four dimensional data so we are considering only two dimensions sepal length sepal width or whichever two columns you want to consider here you see this petal length and petal width is considered and zero is setosa one is versicolor and two is virginica right setosa flower type can be easy classified so I may get 100% accuracy for this but whereas there is a bit confusion between type 1 and type 2 that is versicolor and virginica right there is some mix of a data sets here so orange and uh, green are mixing in between so drawing a fine line or, or finding a classification between these two types is a bit difficult so we may not get the 100% accuracy for type 1 and type 2 whereas for type 1 we may get 100% accuracy because it is easily classifiable so this is what we can conclude from plotting the data so you can see you selected here is a target so we want to plot the target data sets here this is amazing let's proceed so now i know the data now let's apply machine learning model that is random forest so i am importing random forest classifier forest a variable is equal to random forest classifier there are certain parameters let's see what are the different parameters we have so random forest is uh, derived from decision trees so multiple decision trees are nothing but the random forest isn't it and if you remember if you know in decision tree we require depth of the tree we need to decide the criterion of the decision tree whether you need to split the attributes by Gini index or you need to split the values by entropy so this is the machine learning classifier we are using random forest classifier and some of the parameters here so let's quickly understand these parameters I'm just gonna google random forest SK learn let's open it okay you can see the random forest classifier and the parameters number of estimators default is 100 how many trees you want to create from the data set do you want to create 10 trees 15 trees 20 100 whatever default is 100 criterion how do you want to split the attributes as i've said gene index or entropy if you don't understand this we already discussed this in decision tree algorithm so go and watch decision tree first and then come for this video that is random forest and also max depth is required that is what is the depth you want to keep for the trees you need to cut the trees right why do we cut the tree i mean why do we define the max depth is basically to avoid overfitting of the data overfitting and underfitting is the regularization technique to avoid overfitting we are defining the max step we need to cut the tree and similarly so on and so forth there are multiple different 
attributes that you can see here but we don't really need to understand all of these first three are important one and this is sufficient if you want to read more you just google and open the scikit learn library okay okay coming back here so in the random forest classifier we define criterion as gene index and number of estimators is five basically we want to create five trees from this data set depth of the tree is decided each tree depth will be two and then further simple steps train the model using fit model dot fit which is forest dot fit provide x and y x is nothing but input data set dot data this is where i have the input data set dot target this is where i have the output this is x and this is y so my x is actually all the four columns one two three four and y is the target column okay so this is what we are providing here model dot fit forest dot fit and then looking at the score basically looking at the accuracy let me execute this so the score is 96 percent so that means i'm getting 90 percent accuracy okay so this model gives you 90 percent accuracy beautiful amazing right so i can just play with these parameters and check the accuracy further if i change the max depth to five and number of estimators that is let's say if i want to create 10 trees let's see what is the accuracy i'm gonna get so you see accuracy is increased but we should always cut the tree let's see if i make it 10 doesn't make any difference if i make it one yeah accuracy is changed it is 97 percent accuracy i am getting here score i am getting here we are good so you just play with this we need to have the fine-tuned model to predict the output right and furthermore we just want to see precision recall and f1 score to better understand what is the accuracy we are getting here to find how our model is performing we are using metrics okay now what next we can use this trained model to predict the future inputs right so so you prepare the data so currently i'm using same data iris.data is the same input that i have provided so you can imagine here we have prepared new data set new iris data a new flower type you want to predict we provided that here and we are predicting forest is basically a model model dot predict new data i'm just printing the output here so it gives me array you just need to provide one row even one row is sufficient to predict the one flower okay or provide the table to get the array something like this okay so on provided data this is what the output we are getting zero is setosa one is versicolor two is virginica now to understand data in the more detail we are further looking at the matrix of the data that is precision recall and f1 score let me catch what is expected and what is predicted so expected is nothing but my actual target iris dot target and predicted is nothing but forest dot predict iris dot data basically after prediction what is the predicted output you got this is expected output predicted out so i have prepared my variables and providing these variables to matrix classification report to get the report basically to calculate precision recall and f1 score i'm passing expected and predicted and also i want to see the confusion matrix specifically we call this as confusion matrix so let's see how does my confusion matrix looks like okay so the matrix looks something like this precision recall and f1 score looks something like this so you can see for type 0 that is set to sub 111 we are getting 100 percent accuracy 50 data set and all of them are rightly classified type 1 versicolor is uh, precision is 94 recall is 98 f1 score is basically average of precision and recall whenever your clients ask you or whenever your manager asks you what is the accuracy you got so you always provide the accuracy in the form of f1 score so they will ask you for f1 score f1 score of our model for type 0 is 1 for type 1 is 96 and type 2 is also 96 all right and the total accuracy if i see is the 97 percent okay so f1 score of our model is the 97 percent this is what i can conclude by looking at the matrix and furthermore we are looking at the confusion matrix here so confusion matrix gives us detailed overview detailed inside of the data so we have 50 setosa type flowers right all are lightly classified zero classified virginica zero classified as versicolor whereas this row tells me about how many of these are classified as versicolor and how many of these are classified as virginica so 49 versicolor one virginica and third row talks about type that is virginica so three are wrongly classified as versicolor and 47 are rightly classified as virginic 
beautiful all right i hope you understood how we are using random forest classifier and we have also understood how we are using different metrics to look at the insights of the data to accurately find out the precision recall f1 score and to find the actual accuracy of the model by using confusion metrics okay so this is it for this video i hope you are loving this i hope you are able to understand whatever i am able to present by the way i will be uploading the data set which i have used on our github repository so make sure you also check our github repository the link is also available in the description other than this if you have any questions please comment down below and let us know what other videos you want to see in future okay that is it for this video take care bye bye